EVs becoming very popular. We see more and more on the road. But is there one vital component? Without the EVs, we'll go nowhere. The EV chargers. Now, while they're vital, they all look very similar to me. So is there a difference? And what's the trend in EV charging? Present by your energy answers. I see a lot of EV chargers here. Is there anything special about yours? Yeah, so Fronius' EV charger has a huge list of customizable settings, ranging from PV surplus mode all, through, all the way through to load balancing systems. It's got it all running together with the Fronius ecosystem. As you can see, there are chargers are compact in size. If you see all other brands, they have chargers that are bigger in size. So that makes it unique. Pulsar Pro is the latest one that we have launched. It comes with the RFID technology as well. So for example, if you're installing for your business, you can have different employees who can have the RFID cards and they can come and swap it and charge the feed. When it comes to the Solar Edge EV charger, I guess my advice to everybody is an electric car will basically double your home's energy use. So it's important to take that seriously. But you also don't want an EV charger that's gonna fight battery storage because that's another trend which is happening at the same time. With the Solar Edge home system, all of it works seamlessly because you're dealing with one manufacturer. With our EV charger, it's a single phase EV charger. The other beauty of that is it means that it can operate during blackout. So I'm not a fan of three phase EV chargers. And the speed bump of going from seven to 11 kilowatts, in my experience, it really doesn't matter and it's oversold a lot of the time. And so if I'm an end customer now buying an EV charger, what's your best advice to end customers? So obviously at the end of the day, it depends on your need. For example, if you have a single phase installation or a three phase installation. So for example, if you've installed a three phase charger and your car doesn't support a three phase, it supports a single phase, you don't want to be able to get three phase uh, charging speed. Yeah, so depending on how you want to use it, if you want to take it with you on the go, we've got our go version. Uh, if you want to use it at home, this is perfect for residential. We've even got features to lock the cable into the EV charger itself if you don't want it to get stolen. If you want to buy a charger like this, definitely look at the onboard charger rating of your car to make sure that uh, a good AC charger like this is suitable. Well, as I said I, earlier, I think it really comes back to that integration. There's this convergence coming and you need to have a good plan of attack of how those appliances are going to work together and not fight each other. And for us, our unique advantage here is efficiency. You don't want to lose energy off your roof in conversions. With Solar Edge, we're the masters of DC. We control DC, we control the roof, and we control the voltage. So that allows us to then DC couple our batteries so that we can take energy straight from the roof into our battery with no conversions. If you're dealing with an AC coupled solution, you've got that triple conversion penalty. You're going from the roof out to the grid, grid into the battery, battery out to the grid again. That's all loss. That's yeah. money off your roof. With electric cars, it's the same issue. When you're buying an electric vehicle charger, a lot of these are coming in and out of the grid. Even our current generation one does. That's what matters is what's coming next. Now, Solar Edge, we have something amazing to showcase here at All Energy here in 2023. You, you've just said about something about technology changes. So yes. what's happening in the EV charging? Isn't it just a charger? I mean, can there be developments? Absolutely. Is there anything happening? There's a lot happening, absolutely. So because, show me. Yeah, so let's go have a look at it over here. See, a lot of people think when they're looking at Solar Edge, they think that, that optimizers are about shade mitigation. Couldn't be further from the truth. Optimizers are about controlling voltage. If you control the voltage, the world is your oyster. So what we can do with optimizers is fix the voltage on the roof at 380 volts. And that means that now we can get the voltage from your panels directly into the DC port of the car. So this is a CCS port. That's the DC port that goes straight into the battery of your car. So you're going from DC on the roof to DC in the car. So it doesn't have to touch the grid. The inverter is still our point of contact with the grid. And that gives us massive advantages in the policy environment in these areas. So we are going down a very different route to the rest of the market. This is all behind the meter. It's on the DC side, and it's a fundamentally massive game change in how you can really build a home energy system. What's the whole trend where we're going down the track with EV charging? Is it single phase, three phase, all that kind of stuff? Okay, so basically what Wallbox especially is working on is this This is the future, this is going to take over the market. It's a bi-direction charger, you can charge your vehicle, you can send it back to the grid, and you can send it to the home as well. For example, if a, it's a blackout, you can you know, give light to your home as well. So this is the future, B2, uh, V2G and V2H. Uh, this is what Wallbox is already working on it, and we're just one year when we're going to launch it. 
I suppose the, the newest things are OCPP, so Open Charge Point Protocol, which is uh, involving remote management of the charger and also integration with other uh, third-party inverters as well, if need be. Vehicle to grid is um, an up-and-coming trend. Of course, that's still um, a few years away, but uh, yeah. But now let's say, if I actually agree that you've got a good product, can a silly installer still stuff it up? I mean, is it important to get a good installer? It's absolutely crucial to always choose the best local installer you can find. Judge them based on those relationships and local support is crucial if you want to have that relationship long term. Much better to have a relationship with someone locally who can service your needs when you go from solar today to battery tomorrow, maybe EV charger in a couple of years and then you disconnect the gas in eight years and you start going for a hot water service. You're dealing with one person the whole time. So you want to pick somebody who knows what they're doing, maybe good looking and all that stuff so when they come back you're looking forward to it. Appearances aren't everything. Else. Well, I mean, look at yeah. you. I, I prefer a meritocracy, my friend. <laughs> what do you say about EVs overall? Are they going to finally in Australia take another 15, 20 years to come? Or what's the situation going to be in five years from where you see the market? So honestly, uh, Australia is way behind than Europe and the States. I would say five years behind than States and Europe as well. In the next five years, you're going to see EV out of every 10 cars, four are going to be EV. It's booming, we are super busy, we're going slowly and steadily, and I hope to see EV all around the world and all on the road. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.